This is Vicki, also known as Dragonfly7673. I'm recording this on October 8th. Um, this is actually my second start because the first one I started rambling and just, it was not good. It, it was not good television. So, anyway, last week I did go to my parents. So I went there um, Wednesday night and then stayed until Sunday early, late morning. Um, while I was there, I did get to spend a lot of time with my son. So, and it's, it's, and I'm sure part of it is because he doesn't see me very often, but when he does see me, he wants to spend time with me. So, we, I got to meet his, um, his IEP teacher. To anyone that doesn't know, um, I don't remember what IEP stands for right now, but basically she's kind of like a champion to help stand up for him and protect his rights um, now that he's been diagnosed with Asperger's. Um, there's certain things that like when the teacher says you have to have handwritten note cards, she knows that my son gets to, can do typed ones if he, if he needs to because writing sort of glitches for him. Um, handwriting. So she's kind of like his champion. And I've talked to her a lot via email, but this was my first time meeting her. So my mom and I went to go meet her for the first time. And we did find out that he is doing, he's not doing perfect in school, but he is doing a lot better. <laughs> Instead of failing everything, he's only failing a couple things and he's got A's and B's in other classes. So this is a huge improvement I'm sure there will be more improvements, but his attitude. I can't say enough how happy I am that we found this school for him. But anyway, while I was there, I did get some knitting done. Um, so, we'll just go right into it. I worked on a little bit on the Harvest Dew socks when I was at work last week. All I did was increase the gusset a little bit. I still have... Um, one more repeat before I'm done with the gusset increases. Um, I had told you guys that I would do a tutorial on my heel. Um, my heel basically you start increasing almost whenever you feel like it <laughs> and then you increase until the length of the sock is the length of your foot. And then you do the heel turn and it goes almost straight up and there's no wraps or anything to pick up no holes and I was really proud of it <laughs> then it occurred to me that while my thought process is my own the mechanics of this heel are very similar to a flegal heel um, the only real difference being that I have about an inch for the heel turn for the heel cup and she has it to just like a couple stitches um, and she has like math formulas to figure out how much you need to increase and where to put the marker and all this and I just kind of my way wings it a little more I'm almost gonna sneeze so I think I will still do the tutorial so I can explain my thought process, but I'm going to have to list that the mechanics are very similar to the Flegel Hill. Um, that's all I'll say on that right now. So, I also, oh, sorry if you heard that, um, worked on the twitchy socks, well, one sock. My son and I went to go see Hotel Transylvania, plus he had a chiropractor appointment, and I don't know what else I did working on these socks, but the last time you saw them, I was just starting this green stripe, and I think I was about here, and now I just finished the pink stripe. So, there's a decent amount done. Because most of that was uh, going to the movies with him. Uh, we saw Hotel Transylvania. When we went, we went to the 
earliest showing at the Madison Theater on Saturday. And there was only a few people in the theater. But we both we both liked it. We thought it was funny. Um, There's a few kind of inside jokes if you realize who the um, actors, the voice actors and actresses are. So we liked it. Um, it was funny. I had given him a choice of like a whole bunch of movies and that was the one he picked. I was like, okay. So we did see it in 3D. Um, 3D does mean it's a little harder for me to knit because sometimes if I think I'm stuck, I can kind of hold up my knitting. Well, when I have the 3D glasses on, it kind of it warps my perception a little bit. I can see the movie fine, but when I try and look at my knitting, it's not so good. So then I have to drop my glasses down and then I can't see the movie. But yeah, it is what it is. So the last week I didn't show you the Everlasting Love because I was like, okay, I'd only gotten two pattern rows done, four rows total, and it just, there wasn't enough change. Well, this week I got another, uh, I got another six rows done. So another, so three more pattern, three more plain. So that means there's ten rows since the last time you saw it, so I figured I'd show it again. Um, this section here is the start of the lotus. And right here in the center, I'm starting to make some more uh, petals. So I am at, I just finished row 150 out of 200. So, it's coming along. Um, I got really excited at one point because on my knit companion, for some reason the chart got sort of stuck. I The touchpad just wasn't responding. Um, and I thought, oh, wow, I'm almost done with this chart. I didn't think I was that close to the end. And then my brain started processing, you're not that close to the end. Something's wrong. So I just flipped the page and came back and then I could move it and went, oh, no, I wasn't that close to the end. But it is moving along. I'm At this point, I get, it takes about an evening to do a row. Maybe I can get two rows some nights. Um, but while I was there, I got, I got a pattern row done Wednesday night. I got a plain row and a pattern row done. I don't know. I got I got like one row done each day from Wednesday to Sunday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. One day I must have gotten two rows done, but I don't know which day anymore. So, but I am it's it's moving. I keep plugging away at it. Um I do have to wind the second skein. I'm trying to decide if that's going to be coming with me to Rhinebeck or Australia. So I cannot believe there's only one more weekend and then next week is Rhinebeck weekend. So um, now because I was going to be gone, I didn't think I would get the spinning done for Michelle. Um, now Michelle won the fine feathers uh, roving from the lo local-ish yarn shop. Uh, Mount Horb is more local to my parents, but I ended up, I spun Monday after a podcast and Tuesday, and I basically was just like, I'm just going to focus on spinning. And so I got all the singles done Tuesday night before I went to bed. So that meant that when I came back on Sunday, I just needed to ply. Um, I decided to Navajo ply because I happen to like Navajo plying. Now, this looks really pretty. Um, it's nice and straight. I'm going to show you a picture. Okay, now that picture wasn't super clear, but that picture was the picture I sent best friend in a total panic last night because from everything I'm reading, I think on some of my spinning I've been underplying. So I decided, because this was a little thinner, the singles were thinner, to make sure I spun them a little tighter so that they wouldn't come apart later. And then, so I spun them, and then I plied them. 
and I was like, oh, it's coming out really pretty. I put it on the um, Nitty Naughty, and then I took it off, and it just went whoosh, into this, like, crazy curly head kid mess. I was just like, oh my god, I was almost in tears because I was like, this one isn't even for me, and what am I going to do? And I, and Helena of the Willow Fairy Knits podcast on Plurk said, you know, give it a good soak. It does wonders. Now, I've soaked my stuff before and had it, you know, untwist a little bit, whatever. I was like, okay, I will soak it. So I soaked it, and I actually soaked it numerous times. The wa I've got to say, the water was so purple. This was dumping dye like crazy. One of the times I actually gave it a vinegar bath, and it was still losing some dye, but at least not as much. Um, I might post a picture here. So, I think you, hopefully you saw it, it looked like grape Kool-Aid. But, so I have to warn Michelle, um, because whatever this gets washed with, it's going to need to be washed separately for a little while, I think. Or whatever it gets made into. Anyway, but, now look. I soaked it, I thwacked it, and it looks absolutely beautiful. So, um... I three plied it. I think it's about a fingering. Um, because <laughs> I had a panic because I was like, wow, this was 3.8 ounces. And when I did the four ounces the pr last week that I showed you, I was all excited because I got over 400 yards. And I was like, well, this is 3.8. How did I only get um, 200 yards? And then it occurred to me that I uh, three plied it, which of course would use up more yarn. So, in general, this is about, I'm looking, I'm using, there's a, um, this is about a heavy fingering sport weight. Um, there is a eye spin tool kit. Of course, it went straight to that, um. Oh well. It's called Eye Spin Toolkit and it has these lines and you can put your yarn in them. Now I don't know if it's totally accurate, but it's pretty close actually. Um, not only does it have wraps per inch, but it also has calculators. So like it'll tell you, um, okay, if you, yeah, say I wanted to three ply this. And my singles wrap per inch was, we'll say, 23. I don't know what it was. It'll say my plied yarn is going to end up being about a 13 wraps per inch. So, anyway, it has a whole bunch of different calculators. I saw it originally on uh, Tina of Knitting Blooms podcast. Um, <laughs> she's kind of funny. Uh... I just discovered on my podcast player, I use Downcast as my podcast player for my iPhone. And one of the things, and I discovered it by accident because I accidentally hit the button once, um, that you can play uh, podcasts, whether they're audio or video, at different speeds. So you can do it at half speed, regular speed, double speed, or triple speed or one and a half all of a sudden I realized that I could listen to some podcasts on double speed they're still perfectly understandable and I can get through them so some of these ones that are an hour that I normally am less like I just don't have time all of a sudden I'm flying through them so I've listened to a whole bunch of podcasts lately listened or watched because I've been speeding them up um, the only one that's I did laugh the one day because there was an episode, I don't remember whether it was Fiberista Files or Knitting on the Fly. I think it was Fiberista Files. But Katie and Heather were together. And uh, they sound almost the same on double speed as they do normally. 
so which just made me laugh um and then so i was listening to tina on double speed and she was talking about listening to audiobooks and audio podcasts on double speed to get through them and I was like, and so I sent a thing on Ravelry saying, oh yeah, I've been doing that. In fact, I was listening to you, I was watching you on double speed while you were talking about it. And she's like, really? How were you doing that? Well, she was using a different podcast app. Um, so she now got downcast because she, because she can get through it. And she mentioned on her podcast this past weekend that she was listening to everybody on double speed to get through them. So triple speed's a little too much. And I gotta say... Amy Beth of the Fat Squirrel, I listen to her at one and a half because she's already super fast. And if you put her on double speed, wow, it's kind of crazy. So, other things that happened this week. Um, I had told you about these things, but I didn't have them yet to show you. This came in the mail. It is from Yarn vs. Zombies. You should be able to see that right there. It is called Calico Kitty, um, and it was at a reduced price, and 50% of the proceeds were going to a local shelter. Um, so this is called, well, here it says Calico Cat, but I think on the listing it said Calico Kitty. Anyway, it's a 100% Corydale top. It's in their grip base, um, and it's 100 grams. So it is a gradient so it will go from the white to the dark gray the lighter gray the steel to the calico kitty orange I think it'll be really pretty I don't know yet if I'm going to want to spin it as it is or fractally do it so that the colors join up I don't know yet so that one I bought, and that was my one thing that I bought, even though I've been kind of saying, I'm not really on a yarn diet, but I've been trying, I've been like, I'm going to Rhinebeck, I'm going to Switzerland, which I know I'm going to go to the yarn shop there. I don't need to buy yarn. In fact, usually when my son and I hang out for the day, we go and get his hair cut, and we go specifically to this one cost cutters because it's right next to the sow's ear in Verona, Wisconsin. And we went to get his haircut, but I didn't go to the yarn shop because I was like, you know what? I'm not buying anything and it, I don't really like going wandering too much if I'm not gonna buy anything. I also, that day, we went to the store where my mom works, which is Wisconsin Craft Market in Madison at Westgate Mall. And because I know she's been adding just a ton of yarn. Um, it's a craft store. Um, in the front of the store right now, the main area has a bunch of kids crafts, which is really good if you're trying to, you know, kind of look at things for um, school or for Christmas and you're looking for kids stuff that's not video games. But you can't see the yarn from the front of the store. But if you go in, the whole back is yarn. I mean, it was, I haven't been there for a while, and there's a couple aisles on the side, and the whole back is, there's aisles of yarn, and it's just kind of amazing. Um, they don't carry the really high-priced yarn, they and they don't, car don't carry the really low-priced big-box yarn. They're right in the middle, they have the Cascade, um, Cascade 100% wool, Cascade Superwash, uh, a ton of the Barocos, um, Pack-a-Ped. Oh, there was something that I saw that I really kind of wanted because I had never seen it before. It was a sock yarn. Crap, and I meant to ask my mom about it too. And now I can't even remember what it was called. My son was giving me a hard time because I was like, oh, it was so pretty, it was bright. And he said, Mom, you just said that you weren't buying yarn. Um, anyway. Just a ton. If you live anywhere near the Madison area, you should go. Um, count it, add it to as one of your yarn shops. Um, granted, they don't have like a place to sit down and have knit night, but as far as just having a lot of choices, 
they've got a lot of choices. Anyway, the other thing I got, I told you guys that I had one yarn from Upstream Alpacas. Um, because I was one of two people that spun their yarn last month. I had picked Hazel, and I'm kind of curious what it's going to look like on the show. In When I try to take pictures, it actually came out a lot brighter than it really is in real life. Um, it's just got a slight muted tone, but it's really pretty. Um, this is done uh, in the braid, so it will... So it is three strands, just like I showed you last week. Um, so it'll go back and forth between the green and the gold and the purple and the green and the gold and the purple. So, but it's so soft. It's 100% baby alpaca, and it is so, so soft. So, um, something to show you that's totally not knitting. This, um... When we went Labor Day weekend, when we had the cow chip fair, um, Tiff had shown you that she had gotten a necklace from one of the vendors. This was also from one of the vendors, and once upon a time, I had the business card so I could tell you guys where it was from. I don't have it anymore, but I don't have it hung yet. But this uh, ball glows. It is solar powered, so all day it will uh, get energy, and then at night it'll start glowing. And it goes through a whole cycle of colors, red, green, purple, blue. But I left it at my parents' house, and because it was hanging in the front window, because it just seemed a logical place to put it, and I totally forgot about it. So this time I got to bring it. Um, and apparently my mother was telling best friend that they might let me bring it home. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I brought it, I he saw it and he went, oh, so they did let you bring it home. Um, oh, I am missing something. All right, I will post a picture here. All right, what you just saw was a group of mini skeins that I got from Kelly of Ethereal Fibers. She had an August prize drawing where you posted pictures of your pets and then she would make mini skeins um, for like hexapuffs. Um, I'm not actually making hexapuffs and I have a bunch of little mini skeins and I've never really started doing anything with them. But I'm thinking now of doing like a sock blanket or crocheted or something, um, especially since I won them. <laughs> so now I have to decide what I'm going to do with them. But they're all different colors. She did not tell me what the different colors were because she said that, she said if I really wanted color names, she would make some up for me. <laughs> Which, there's 13 skeins, I was almost tempted to ask her to say, yes, you must name them all. I didn't though. So. I, but I left them downstairs. I got them right before, like, I got them out of the mailbox right before I was packing up the cats to leave. So I took a picture, and that was, and then I left it downstairs. Um, okay. The only other thing to mention, um, I got an email the other day, and Steve of Dramatic Knits just mentioned this, too. So... Um, from Cynthia Moore, who is also known as Fitter Knitter. And she basically says, I enjoy your podcast and hope you will mention the Calendar of Hope on your podcast. This is our fifth year of publication, and in that five years, we have raised over $5,000 for breast cancer. The calendar contains 14 never-before-published knitting patterns. Um, you can download the first pattern for free from her website. I'll link it in the show notes. Um, and then if you want the, uh, a digital copy of the pattern is $18. A printed one is $28. I did download the digital one. Um, the proceeds are going to Avon's Army of Women. Basically, they are looking, 
instead of looking for a cure for cancer, they are looking for the cause of breast cancer. Um, so, I don't. I bought one, and I'm mentioning it to you. I'm going to post a picture here of the cover art because that pretty much has all 14 of the their dishcloth patterns essentially. dishcloth or afghan squares, whatever you want to make of it. Um, the patterns look to be very well written. My only semi-complaint <laughs> is that they are not charted. And I happen to like charted patterns for things like that where you have kind of a picture in uh, a picture or a design. But they, they do look well written. Um, there are different designers for different uh, squares. So, uh, all of that is posted in the show notes. Um, I think that's everything. Uh, remember, tell people that it is on YouTube now. Um, if you have been watching for a while, thank you. <laughs> I was looking and people are celebrating their 1,000 members and I'm looking going, I've got 200. <laughs> It's okay. We're a nice group. But every now and then I'm like, oh, really? Only 200? How does everybody else have so many? I think it's because they have more contests and they require people to uh, join for the contests. Um, I have an idea for a contest, but it won't be until after I get back from all my trips. Um, speaking of, next week the podcast should be just like normal because there's nothing going on this coming weekend. Um, except I might get new flooring downstairs. The following week, I go to Rhinebeck Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I come home 10 o'clock Sunday night. Monday, I have to leave about 3 o'clock to drive to O'Hare and be at the airport in plenty of time for a 7 o'clock flight. So I'm home Monday but I don't think I'm going to record. So this coming Monday is fine. The next Monday I may not record. I guess it kind of depends on what's going on with Rhinebeck and everything else. But my priority is going to be making sure I um, get laundry done and repack for my other trip. Um, especially flying international. That makes me a little more wiggy. So... Um, along with that, I emailed uh, Katie of Knitting on the Fly, Jet Girl 1313 today. When I originally volunteered to donate this yarn to her Click for Babies, I wasn't going to Switzerland. Um, now I suspect she will draw the prize like right in the middle of me traveling. I told her that I will mail it as soon as I get back. So if somebody that watches this podcast, or if you hear any grumbling later, <laughs> I can't ship this until I get back from Switzerland. I just can't. So, um, so but the latest it'll be shipped is the 29th, which shouldn't be a problem. Unless we can get the address sooner than that. But I don't know exactly when Katie's doing the drawing. She's taking hats until the 15th, and I leave on the 19th. I mean, that's when everything starts, so... We'll see. But if by any chance you are the winner or you hear somebody that won that's grumbling, let them know. I will mail it. Um, I mailed all the Susan G. Komen ones right away. I mean, it wasn't even a week and all those got mailed out. Um, and I've confirmed with almost everybody that their packages did come. Um, I need to hear... F I need to hear from Helena. Um... I, she just bought a house, and there's some other stuff going on, and so I had asked if she wanted me to spin the yarn for Sarah, but I didn't hear an answer yet. In the meantime, since I don't have an answer, I have to figure out what I'm going to spin next, and I haven't decided yet. Everything is so pretty. And every time I pick something up, I go, that's what I want. Oh, wait, no, that's what I... Whatever. <laughs> so, um, Michelle, if you're watching this, this is still damp, so I'm not mailing it yet. 
um, it needs about another day to dry. So I will probably mail it tomorrow, Wednesday at the latest. So, and I'll probably email you anyway. So I will talk to you guys all later. I got a couple pictures to post at the end, but nothing, not a whole lot. And again, I'll cross post on YouTube. So I'll talk to you later. Bye now.